Hi everyone, in this video we're going to look at how to update security matchers to be able to run the latest Spring Boot version 3.0, as well as some other important changes that were introduced lately. In the previous video we talked about how to update earlier version to boot 2.7, so if you're one of the earliest version you can check that video out, otherwise we'll continue starting from 2.7. Let's go. Okay, here we have example security configuration. And there are a couple of rules here, but I want to pay our attention to the following parts right here. So here we have end matcher, which is called on HTTP security and tells to only protect the routes which is specified in this pattern. Then we have authorized requests with end matchers on it for individual endpoints. We have public endpoint which is publicly available as well as H2 console and all other requests uh, will need to be authenticated. As to endpoints that we have, if I navigate to application controller, we can see that we have a public, private and another public endpoint. And for simplicity, they all return a simple string. So if I navigate back to my security config, uh, the first thing I need to do is I need to add a configuration annotation. So to make sure that uh, being here will be instantiated. And the second part that I will go ahead and do if I will navigate to my POM file and I will change the security, uh, the Spring Boot version to 3.0.1. That is a latest available at the moment. I'll also need to change a Java version to 17 because starting from Spring 3.0, the minimum required Java version is 17. If I will apply my changes and redirect back to security config, I can see <clears throat> that some of the methods are broken. So the first thing that I'm going to refactor is that ant matcher on HTTP security method. And before I do this, I want to show you that this ant matcher is different from the end matcher that applied on authorized request. And this matcher needs to be changed to security matcher. So the next step is to look at these authorized requests and we can see that this method is deprecated. So in order to stay up to date, I need to change this to authorized HTTP requests. The next part we see that end matcher method on authorized HTTP requests uh, simply doesn't exist. And the trick here is we need to change those to request matchers. Now we can see that all errors are gone, but there is a little bit of magic hidden behind the request matchers method. So if you come from an earlier spring version, you know that there is ant matcher and there is MVC matcher. And there is a difference between the two depending how the rule is applied. So now we don't have those, we only have request matchers. And the question is, how does Spring know which rule to apply? So in the answer is simple, we still have ant matchers and MVC matchers. And the way that request matcher works, it will look if WebMVC is on a class path, and if it is, it will apply MVC matchers. If there is no WebMVC on a class path, it will apply and matcher style, which actually will introduce some unexpected behavior because remember, we used to have and matchers here. And because I have a WebMVC on a class path, those now became WebMVC matchers. So now let me start my application and see how it works. So I'm starting my application. And if I navigate to my browser and type localhost 8080 public, we can see I can access public endpoint, which, which makes sense because it has a permit all method on it. But if I go to H2 console, we see that I get 403, which means access is denied. So for some reason, request matcher here did not work as expected. And this is due to some internal configuration, how H2 works. 
but there may be some other cases if you're running your application in production. And the point I want to make here is if request matcher doesn't work and you still want to use the latest Spring Boot version, there is still a way to explicitly tell Spring to use ant matchers. And the way to do this is to wrap our pattern into an ant matcher method, which we can import from Spring. And if I run my application right now, we can see that I can access H2 console right now. Uh, so that is the point uh, of this method. So the last thing I want to show, uh, something that Spring encourages us to use, even though our current configuration is working, there is one style that Spring uh, highly encourages us to use, and this is a Lambda DSL style for authorized HTTP requests. Uh, so we're currently using a chain type of style, and in order to refactor to a Lambda DSL, all we have to do is to move all of our rules from here inside a Lambda function right here. And if I restart my application, I can see that if I navigate to public, uh, that's endpoint is public. If I navigate to private, uh, this endpoint is protected. And if I navigate to H2 console, we have this endpoint available. And that concludes my video about migrating to the latest Spring Boot 3.0 version. I hope it was helpful for you. So I'll see you in the next video.